I'm gonna show you one crazy powerful glute stretch that's going to improve your deep Asian squat. A lot of times people have trouble getting into this deep Slav squat, Hindu squat, primal squat, kimchi squat, hoopoo squat, human squat, because their glutes are way too stiff and restricted. So I'm gonna show you one very simple stretch that's gonna help you get the glutes to open up so that you can get deeper into your squat and so you can get your knees closer together so you have options for foot position and knee position in case you ever need to jam yourself into a tiny toilet stall in Asia somewhere. And by the way, if you've ever had to do that, please drop me a comment and tell us all about that experience. The great news is this is simple to do at home. If you have some yoga blocks, it makes it easier. If you don't, just use some cushions or pillows or towels rolled up or books. You're just gonna put yourself up on your block if you've got it. Then you're gonna sit with your back leg just kind of tucked behind you. Tuck it somewhere comfortable. I don't want you to stress about like making it exactly 90 degrees or anything. This back leg is not really what we're focusing on. We're focusing on this front side. Front leg is just gonna be out in front of you at around a 90 degree angle, but you can play around with the angle of your knee over time. If you're on a cold, hard floor like I am, you might want a cushion or a towel or something, or you might wanna just do this whole exercise on an exercise mat to keep things feeling nice and cushy. It's also helpful to have something to support you on the side that you're trying to stretch. So I've got a yoga block, but you can use a chair, a couch, or the wall. Whatever you got is totally fine. We want to have some support so that we can then sit up and then start to control how we stretch the glutes here. When you're sitting up, I don't want there to be any stress on this knee here, so use cushioning. You might even find having a cushion underneath the heel here helps. Bend the knee, extend the knee, find the position that's comfortable when you're sitting up. We don't want this to be distracting us. So we're gonna be leaning forward. First, just head towards the knee and see if you notice a stretch in your glute. If you do, awesome. You're gonna hang out there and let your glutes learn to handle this position. Breathe, please breathe. If it feels too intense and you can't breathe, then you need to back up a little bit and Remember to breathe. If it doesn't feel like a stretch at all, then there's a couple things I want you to do. First, I wanna make sure that you keep your abs engaged while you're folding forward. When you fold forward, I don't want you to lead with the belly button just dumping forward over your belt line and your low back going into an arch. I want you to keep the abs on and the rib cage down as you fold forward. I don't want you to flare up like this because then you're just crunching down here and tricking yourself and also you're going to be subtly avoiding the stretch in the glute. I'm telling you this because I was making this mistake for years and it was robbing me of an awesome stretch. So please keep your abs engaged and make sure they're engaged while you're going through all of the positions I'm about to show you. You might not feel a stretch here because you need to find a different angle and that's the great news about this stretch because there is a huge arc that we can explore and that you should explore over time so that you can get full mobility through this whole big range of motion. I had you start off just going towards the knee because that's an easy target, but we can make anything a target. So we could go to mid shin, we could go to a little above the ankle, we could go right towards the foot. We can even go way over here. We can go way over here. No matter where you set your target, you wanna make sure your abs stay on so that you're not just dumping your belly button all over your lap. That's gonna help you feel that glute stretch and you just wanna hang out there. <sighs> Get deeper into it, reach for it. And especially when you're at these more extreme ends of your range of motion, make sure that you are staying within a tolerable range that feels like a medium challenge, that doesn't feel like you're gonna snap your spine because you're twisting so hard or break something or pinch something in your inner thigh. If you feel pinching or jamming on the closing angle of any stretch, you're doing it wrong and you need to back out. The opening angle on this stretch is all here. The closing angle is right here. This femur and the pelvis are closing in and over here on this side, it's opening up. So if you feel pinching in your groin, stop going so hard so fast. Back out, find the position that feels like it's just challenging the muscles on the opening angle. Now just relaxing here and breathing and holding for 60 seconds to two minutes is a great way to lengthen your glute muscles because they probably haven't gone into a lengthened position in 
Well, maybe forever, but we can also improve our results by using some contract relax techniques. So what you can do is actually fire your glute muscles when they're in that stretch position by pushing down into the floor or into a pillow and then feel that contraction of those stretch muscles and then relax and then see if you can go a little deeper into that stretch. What we're doing here is building strength at length. We're lengthening the muscle and then making it work in that lengthened position. You can do these gentle contractions at 30 to 60% of your maximum effort, which means if you feel like you're you're doing it too hard. As you get better at the exercise, you get more connected to those muscles, you can certainly try being a little more intense with it. But when you first start, please keep it a gentle, gentle, easy contraction, just so you can connect your brain to those muscle fibers. And over time, please do whatever you feel like you gotta do. But seriously, there's no good reason to be going 100% effort when you first start. It's, you're just gonna get hurt. So we're contracting, firing those muscles, feeling them work then relaxing and then seeing if we can go a little bit deeper into that position while still keeping the abs engaged. <sighs> I strongly encourage you to use static stretching and contract relax stretching because that helps you build strength at every length. Hey, I'd like to say a big thanks to Randy M for the $100 donation via PayPal. Thank you so much. If you want to support this channel too, use the donate link you'll find in the description box for all the options, including PayPal and Patreon. You can also use the join and thanks buttons on YouTube. And if you haven't already, go to my website to sign up for my newsletter so we always stay connected. Now let's get back to the video. Now I mentioned that there's this huge arc that we can explore and you might be wondering whether it's better to explore one piece of the arc or the other. And my answer is no, just experiment. Figure out where you feel stiff and tight. Maybe going to your foot is just like, oh my God, this feels like heaven. Or maybe it feels like hell. Maybe going straight to the middle of your shin feels like magic for you. It's totally cool. You can keep working on folding forward, 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 and really teaching those glutes to let go. Or like me, you might really like going over this way and crossing over the line of the thigh and really getting deep into that glute. I don't know your personal movement habits and history, so you're gonna have to explore a little bit and figure out what feels the best for you. For me, I know years of doing sumo deadlifts with my feet really wide and really squeezing my glutes really tightened up my outer hips and made it harder for me to get across into this position. So I really love working on this because it really helps me feel like my hips are more free so that I can then transition into getting into a nice deep Asian squat. But if you put a gun to my butt and demanded that I tell you which direction to go, then I would probably go, please don't shoot. And then I'd tell you to go over this way because that really puts the glute on massive stretch in a way that will very directly affect how deep you can get into your Asian squat. The reason I like that target is because the glutes create hip extension, external rotation, and abduction, which can really mess with us when we're just trying to relax down into our deep Asian squat. Because when we go into that squat, we just want our femurs to basically stay in neutral and going into hip flexion. If the glutes are really stiff, they're going to actually pull us into external rotation abduction, which makes it really hard to feel stable or to get even deep. As we're trying to go deeper into the squat with hip flexion, the glutes are going to fight us and say, no, we're too tight. Let's just stay in hip extension and external rotation and abduction. So stretching over to a target on this side of the thigh means we're actually trapping the femur into flexion and adduction. And if you want to be really mean to yourself, you can just put a little more internal rotation pressure into it and it'll feel super good. And if you really want to improve your adduction and internal rotation, you can use another yoga block or cushions and block the knee up and then go through the stretch. This creates that internal rotation and adduction that's going to really help you get the Asian squat a lot better. And another option is to remove the block you're sitting on and just put the block here and then start coming over. The leverages are a little bit different, but you're definitely still gonna get a stretch into the glutes and you're gonna definitely feel like it's gonna improve your ability to keep the knee tracking in rather than getting pulled out. But I still suggest you explore the full range of options because it's just gonna make you a better human being. When you first start off with a stretch, I would suggest you just do it twice in your first week, Monday and Thursday, Tuesday and Saturday, just so you can get a feel for things and so you don't cripple yourself with soreness or instability. 
Start off just doing static stretching for the first week or two so you can get used to the positions and then when you feel capable and comfortable you can start to use the contract relax techniques. A lot of people have really really stiff glutes so if you feel like you can tolerate it go ahead and do it more often in a week. You might find that you can do it every day and it feels great and your body lets go or you might feel like that's too much and you just want to do it three times a week. It's fine just experiment. I know for me, sitting in chairs, riding bikes, and surfing all tighten up my glutes, so I will stretch definitely more often than just once or twice a week to keep my glutes happy. But your mileage may vary and you need to learn how to listen to your body and what it needs. So quick recap, if you're static stretching, hold the position for one to two minutes and breathe and do at least two sets. If you're using contract relax, I would still just set a timer for one to two minutes and just slowly do those contractions on and off for that time period. After you finish your deep glute stretching, go ahead and test your Asian squat and see what you notice. And please drop me a comment to let me know the results. I know I've made a ton of videos on the Asian squat and you might find all those videos kind of overwhelming. So if you want all of that information well organized in a format that makes it easier for you to find the answers you need, then please go to uprighthealth.com DIY and check out my Asian squat program. It just might be what you need to unlock your deep Asian squat. I also have a totally free playlist of all my Asian squat videos that you'll find linked right here. If you want to support this channel, use the donate link you'll find in the description box to become a Patreon patron or make a donation by PayPal. You can also use the join and thanks buttons on YouTube. Like, share, and subscribe with the bell notification on. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.